how to create combat scenarios in the turn-based tactic project. Or actually, I'm going to show you more how to start a combat on top of your own environment. If you don't know how to create your own environments, you can refer to my previous video in which I was showing how to build an environment that is compatible with the grid. But in today's video, we're really just going to look at how to start a combat on top of your own environment. So let's get to it. So in Unreal, I'm in a completely new and empty level. You can see that I don't have anything in my level at all. I don't have any other levels in there and my level is completely empty. It's just a complete new map and now we're going to go through all the steps required to start a combat from a completely empty level so what do we need first well i think we need an environment actually you don't really need an environment you can just start a combat in the empty space and it's also gonna work because the grid is still going to be generated on top of the empty space but it's going to be more interesting if we have an environment and that's why i'm going to reuse the environment we created in the previous video so i'm just going to take that environment and add it into my levels list you don't have to add it into the levels list, you can simply add all the objects re related to the combat directly inside your environments if you want to, but in my case I think it's a little bit more clean if you just have your environments in your level list and then you can easily swap in between those without having to modify the objects that are responsible to start the combat because they are going to be in the persistent level, but that's just going to be a case-by-case -case situation. You can do whatever you want, it doesn't matter as long as you're happy with the setup that you have. So in my case I'm just adding it into a new sub-level right here that way i can simply hide my level my environment if i don't need it and i can bring it back when i want it so it's really going to help us focus on the objects that are in the persistent level which are the objects that are going to start the combat for us so anyway we need that environment so that's pretty good i'm just going to make it uh, always loaded because i don't want to code the loading of my level for today it's not really important in today's video and then i'm going to double click on my persistent level because we are going to add all the objects that we need to be able to start a combat in there for now i'm just going to hide my environment once again because I want to focus on those elements that are going to be in the persistent and the first thing we need is the player start actually we don't really need it but if you want to control where the player is going to spawn in game it's pretty good to have a player start so I'm just going to add a player start right here in the middle of my world so that's pretty good so now when I press play I'm going to always spawn in the middle of the world so that's good and now for the objects that we need to be able to start a combat we need actually three objects we need a first one that is going to be for the player the player actions right here that object is going to let the player interact with everything in your game so you need the player actions to be able to execute actions on the combat system the overworld the grid or anything else so you really need that object to make the game work that's just how i coded the game so you need the player actions in your level and then you also want to have a combat system to be able to trigger a combat so i'm gonna go back in my core folder and i'm gonna go in my combat folder to add a combat system in the level here we go so now i have a player actions to be able to interact with the combat system and the combat system is going to start the combat the third third object that we need is the grid on which the combat is going to happen so let's go back in the core folder and we have the grid folder right here and then we can simply add the bp grid in your level here you go so now you can tell the player to interact with the combat system which is going to move the units on top of the grid that's it that's as simple as that now we just have to link those objects together because they are just floating around in the level they don't know the other one exists so i'm just going to go let's say in my player actions and set the reference to the combat system so right now it's set to none i'm just going to replace it by the bp combat system so now the player actions know which combat system it's going to use for all its logics uh, we don't need the overworld unit group manager into this video because we're not going to build an overworld level it's just going to be a combat level so we don't need that one because we're not going to use the overworld so that's it for the player action now i'm gonna go in my combat system because that one needs to know where is the grid in the level so let's just set the reference to the vp grid here we go that's it that's as simple as that and for the grid we don't have anything to set because these are just the settings of the grid you can actually change them to make them match your level so if i go back in my levels and show my environment i can put my grid in the middle of the world to have a visual and then i can make it as big as i want so let's say 20 by 20 so it covers most of the level here we go so my grid is set up properly on top of my environment and the combat system is aware that the grid exists and the player action is aware that the combat system exists perfect we now have all the objects we need to be able to start a combat the only things that are missing are the units that are going to be part of the combat because right now well it's going to be a pretty empty combat and we can't really start an empty combat so let's go add some units on the grid so i'm gonna go back in my core folder in my units folder and add a few units so one here one here one here i can add as many units as i want just make sure that they are aligned properly with the 
the grid uh, because this is where they are going to spawn in the level once the combat starts. Uh, here we go. I have a few units here and there. I'm just going to move them a little bit up because they are lower than my grid for some reason. Here we go. But now they are all warriors and I don't want to only have warriors in my combat. So I'm going to change the unit type of a few of my units. So here you can scroll down and you can see the unit type and you can change it to anything you want. So I can have a ranger here. I can have a slime here. I can, let's say, add a priest. I can convert that warrior to a bat. And finally, I don't have a chicken, so I'm going to add a chicken. There we go. So now I have all the different types of unit on top of my level, and they are going to be in the combat with all their own specific spells or AI. And actually, that's it. Now you can simply ask your combat system to start a combat, feeding it all those units. Oh, that one is not placed properly. I'm just going to make it in the middle of the tires. There we go. Now you can simply ask the combat system to start a combat, feeding it all those units and the grid and everything in the combat is going Going to start with all those units so to do that well you have to do it by code so it's super simple i'm going to show you an example real quick i'm gonna open the level blueprint right here so in my level blueprint i'm going to make that in the begin play i'm going to start a combat we don't need a tick right now i'm just going to go get a reference to my combat system to 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 where it is where is it where is it here it is i have my combat system so i'm just going to drag it inside my level blueprint and here it is and now i can simply do a quick start Combat. Here we go. On the begin play, I can start a combat. Now I just have to feed it all the information it needs to know to be able to start a combat. So it needs to know where the grid is and all the information of the grid. And if you make that structure, you can see all the different variables that you have to feed it. So here we go. I have all my different variables. These are the same that are in my grid. So where is the center of my grid? What is the size of my tiles on my grid? What is the tile count, the shape of the grid, and if the grid uses the environment or not? So these are all the basic settings that we have inside the grid and we have to feed it into the combat system so it knows where to spawn the grid for that specific combat so okay we're going to do that a little bit later and then we also need to feed it the units that are so all the units that are in the combat right now we have to feed them to the combat system because they are just floating around in the level and the combat system is not really aware of where they are which units are they in which teams they are are they controlled by an ai or not so all those settings the combat system is not aware of that and we need to tell it so let's just make that structure to see how it looks so here we go i have a list of teams that are going to to be in the combat so do we have one team two team actually we can't really have one team so do we have two team three team four team ten teams uh, we have to tell the combat system and that's going to contain all the units that are inside those teams obviously and then we have a list of units that are controlled by an ai so which units in that specific combat are controlled by the ai uh, that's simple and finally we have all the indexes of all of our units so um, in your level uh, your units are already placed on top of the grid so we're going to find all those indexes and feed them to the combat system and tell it okay this is where the units are in combat so this one is right here this one is right there that one is right here so the combat system is going to take that information place those units there and start the combat just like that so okay we have to feed all those informations to the combat system to be able to trigger a combat and there's one last variable right here the object starting the combat and that object is really just for context it doesn't do anything in the game at all it, you can feed it whatever you want if you are in a debug menu for example you can feed it the debug menu that's going to to be the object that started the combat you started the combat from the debug menu or maybe if you were in the overworld you can feed it the object that started the combat to be let's say the overworld manager that way you know that the combat was started during the overworld but as i said it doesn't really affect anything it's just for you to know which object started the combat so if you want to react accordingly depending uh, let's say if the combat just finished or if you want to do something specific when a unit dies let's say in some specific context uh, you can feed it the context object that's just the object that we have right here in my case, let's say I can feed it uh, this uh, level blueprint, doesn't really matter, so self, there we go. The level blueprint of my level uh, new map is going to start the combat, and now if I want to do something specific when, let's say, something happened in the combat, based on that context, well, I can do it. Uh, that's just why it's there. It's just for you to have a context of what object in your level started the combat. Because I can easily see you having multiple sources of combat. Do you have a random encounter triggered from the enemies, or do you have a storyline, or do you have, like, uh, the player started the combat randomly or things like that so you may have multiple contexts in your game so by simply feeding it the object that started the combat you can easily identify which context it is but anyway now what we want to do is simply start the combat we have to populate all those variables and then feed them to the combat system but actually i'm not going to do it that way because well i already have an helper class in my project that does it for us and that's pretty t 
tedious to just fill all those settings uh, manually every time. So I'm just going to close uh, this level blueprint right now. We're not going to use it. And instead, we're going to go inside uh, my other folder right here. We have the scenario folder. And inside that folder, we have two helper classes. We have the combat scenario and the overworld scenario. Today, we're simply going to look at the combat scenario. That object is going to simply help us take all the information that we have in the level right now and feed them to the combat system to start the combat. And if we open that blueprint right here, we can see that it simply, in the begin play, simply starts a combat using the quick start combat function, the same way we were doing in the level blueprint. So we're simply going to quick start a combat, finding it all those information. Those information are simple variables that we have right here and that we can edit in the level, obviously. And on top of that, it's not really mandatory, but the combat scenario also attaches itself to the combat in the event. So it knows when the combat is finished and when the combat is finished, it's simply going to reload the main menu. So it's going back to the main menu if that's something that you want. If it's not something that you want, maybe you want to start a new combat instead. That's why I just left the logic right here. I can simply reattach this right here. And instead of reopening the main menu, I'm simply going to restart my combat from the start. I'm resetting all my units and then I'm starting a new combat over. But as I said, that part right here is not mandatory. You can do anything you want when this combat is over. You can progress in your storyline. You can, let's say, trigger another combat. You can load another level. You can do anything you want. But in my case, I'm simply going to start a new combat because why not? We have the logic right here and it's going to be pretty simple. So let's just keep it that way. Okay, good. Now let's go back in the level and I'm simply going to add the combat scenario inside the level. Here it is. It's all the way in the middle right here. It's pretty nice. And now that when we press play, that blueprint is going to feed all those informations that we have right here in the detail panel to the combat system. So I have the grid data, so all the informations of my grid and the units data. So all the informations of my units. First, it needs to know where the combat system is in the level. So I can simply assign the combat system right here. You can see that it affected the grid because now it's using those settings right here to generate the grid. So I can overwrite what was inside the grid using that blueprint right here. So I can have a smaller grid if I want to, let's say a 15 by 15 or let's say even a 10 by 10. I can have a small, small grid. Actually, I would like to keep my units inside the grid uh, if possible, because I want them to be in the combat. There you go. So now I have a small grid that covers only this section right here, but that is big enough for all my units. Okay, good. So these are the settings for the grid. These are all the basic settings that you already know. So I'm just going to skip them. It doesn't really matter for now. The settings that we are more interested in are the units that are right here. So we have to build the teams of units that we have in the level right now we have to build the units that are controlled by the AI and also the unit indexes. So the positions of where the units are in the level. So, okay, let's start with the units team. I can simply add a few teams. Uh, how many teams do we want? Oh, let's say three teams. doesn't really matter. You can have as many teams as you, as you want. You can have 10 teams if you want. You can have 20 teams if you want. And then you can add those units inside the team. So oh, I added a new team. That's not what I wanted. Okay, anyway, we have four teams now. I'm going to add a new unit in that one. So the unit one is inside the team one. The unit two is inside the team two. The unit three is going to be inside the team one and then you can add all your other units so i can have my unit six my unit seven here doesn't really matter and then i can add another unit as you can see i'm doing it a little bit randomly right now because we're going to use another technique that i'm going to show you in two seconds but uh, you can do it manually like that you can add all the units inside the different teams if you want to and it's also going to work when you press play the units are going to be inside those teams so that's the manual way to do it but there's an automated way if you want if you want to simply rename your unit to have the unit team inside their name, it's going to let you populate those lists automatically using those buttons that we have right here. So I have a few helper function that lets you, let's say, for example, build the teams based on the unit's name. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to rename our units to have the proper team number in their name. And that way you can simply click on that button. It's going to populate the unit's teams uh, automatically for you. So that's awesome. You don't have to do all those steps manually to click here, select all the units that are going to be in all the teams and make sure that you're not making any mistakes and anything. Thing. Instead, you can simply rename your unit. So the way it works is by simply adding underscore team followed by the index of the team in which you want to add the unit. So let's say in my case, the unit one, I want to add it inside the team zero, which is going to be the team controlled by the player by default. So the same for my unit two, I want to add it inside my team zero. Also my unit three, that one, I can put it in my team one and my unit four, I can simply add it in my team one. Also my team, my unit five, let's say I want it to be in the team two. My unit six is going to be in the team two. My unit seven is going 
going to be, let's say, put it inside the player team, so Team 0. So I have three units that are going to be controlled by the player, the Team 0, Team 0, and Team 0 here. And then we have the Team 1, Team 1, and then the Team 2, and Team 2. So now that the other units have their proper name, you can go back inside the, the helper blueprint that we have. So the combat scenario blueprint that we have right here. And now if we click on the build the teams based on unit name, it's going to update the units team. And now we can see that we only have three teams because uh, these are the teams that we added in the units name. And if I expand those uh, units teams, here we go, we can see that in the team zero, we have the unit seven, unit one, and unit two, which are in the team index zero. In the team one, we have the unit three and unit four. And in the team two, we have the unit six and unit five. Here we go. So now all the unit teams are generated properly. That's good. Then we have the units that are controlled by the AI, that variable right here. You can build it manually if you want. You can add all the units that you want to be controlled by the AI manually, just like that, just like that, just like that. That's going to work and it's going to be fine. But you can also click on the build AI list based on team indexes, just like that. And what that function does is simply taking all the units that are not in the team zero because the team zero is controlled by the player. All the other teams are going to be controlled by the AI by default. You can change that logic if you want. But in my case, that's what I wanted. So all the units that are in the team zero are controlled by the player. All the other ones are going to be controlled by the AI. So it's populating that list for you. And the last button that we have right here is the build the desired grid indexes based on unit location. And if you click on that one, it's going to update all the indexes of all your units that are in the world. So right now we can see that we have a few indexes that are assigned to those units. So if I move, let's say my ranger here, I'm going to move my warrior here. I'm going to move that other warrior there, whatever. I'm just moving the units around to see that it works. So I moved my unit, their position changed in the world. And now I can simply go back in my combat scenario right here. We can see all those indexes. I'm just going to cut up them so it's easier to see. There we go. And now if I click on build the desired grid indexes based on location, we can see that, oh, well, it re-updated automatically, but you get the idea. If I move my chicken around right here and I go back here and I generate my list, we can see that it updated the position of my chicken. Same thing for my priest. I can move my priest right here, generate my list, and it updated the position of the priest. So yeah, this is really helpful because you don't have to generate all those indexes yourself. You can simply use the blueprint to generate them. And as I said, all those functions are simply logic inside the combat scenario blueprint that they are right here. So you can see what the logic does to generate the unit's themes. You can see what the logic does to generate the units that are controlled by the AI and finally how to get the indexes of each of our units that are on the grid. So you can see what the logic does and you can adapt the logic uh, according to your needs and what you want to do in your scenarios. But in my case, that's what I want to do. I want to generate my units that way. So now all my data is generated properly. And actually that's about it. Now we have units. They are on the grid. The, the combat scenario is going to call the start combat on begin play. So event begin play right here was going to quick start the combat. So when I press play, well, it should start the combat. Hey, it seemed to work. So that's pretty good. We are in combat. Now the team zero is controlled by the player. So the blue team right here, all the three units that are blue are going to be controlled by the player. So I can move around. I can cast some spell here and there. I can attack. I can move away. I can go to the next unit. Obviously, I can play my turn as usual. And then once I'm done playing with all my different units, I can simply end my turn and now the AI is going to control all the red units and the green units. So everything that is not uh, in the team zero is going to be controlled by the, play, uh, by the AI and we can see that it works right now. All the units are moving around and that's pretty nice. We can enable the tactical mode which is going to hide all the elements of the environments that are not part of the combat. So the tactical mode hides all those useless elements that we don't need in the combat because, well, they are not part of the combat area. So that's pretty good uh, example of what the tactical mode does. And that's pretty nice. You can speed up the combat, slow down the combat, play your turn and everything. And once the combat is over, either because you ended the combat manually just like that, or if you ended the combat for reals, the blueprint is going to restart a new combat because that's the logic we decided to do. We can end the combat and it's going to start a new combat, but that's only happening because in the combat scenario right here we are attached to when the combat is and then and when the combat is over we're going to simply restart a new combat but if let's say instead you prefer to go back in the main menu you can simply change that logic just like that and now it should go back to the main menu when the combat is over so i'm just going to press play again we are now back in the combat and now if i end my combat it should go back to the main menu here we go and now we're back to the main menu of my game perfect so yeah i guess that's gonna be it for today's video now you know how to set up a combat scenario using your own environment so i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye